Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to these videos. Uh, this is some of the highest value that I can give you, um, at least on a free platform. Uh, and if I'm really honest, I know um, it, it's tough floating your own boat sometimes. It is very difficult to find this, this level of expert advice and experience on these difficult dynamics. And so in this particular video, I'm going to go back to this infographic. If you, if you haven't watched my previous videos on self-care in the high conflict situation uh, or avoiding anger and conflict in high conflict situations, make sure you go back and watch those. Uh, I feel really good about those. I, I think that's some of the best content I can give you just in, you know, in, in a general sense or on a free platform. Um, and so I got to go to work soon, but I'm going to do one more of these videos. We're going to talk about uh, protecting the kids from a high conflict parent. And uh, let's go back to my, my little infographic. Uh, again, if you haven't watched my other videos, I would recommend them. Uh, high conflict situations have tons of dynamics. Uh, these to me are the four main ones, okay? Co-parenting, uh, court, kids, and self-care, okay? Uh, high conflict types, by the way, they love to threaten court as though they've got the court in their back pockets, as though uh, attorneys and judges are like their personal legal team that will uh, crush you. Uh, most often, that isn't even remotely true. Uh, high conflict types tend to overstate or maybe assume too much uh, when it comes to being able to leverage court against you. Now, on that note, uh, they are sometimes highly skilled at manipulating attorneys and judges to see things their way, okay? Uh, if you're new here, uh, if you haven't watched my other videos, uh, I'm just going to warn you, I I'm a, a, as a licensed therapist, maybe I'm not supposed to do this because therapists are supposed to be agreeable or nice and always minding their P's and Q's. Uh, I generally believe that one of my basic and most, um, for lack of a better term, sacred responsibilities is, is to protect kids. Because quite frankly, our society does not do enough to protect kids. If, you, if you're a caretaking parent who has a high conflict ex, uh, and if you believe that the system will protect your kids better than you can, I'm sorry, but you are, you're wrong. Uh, that is inaccuracy that is a uh it's just not it's just false okay uh, attorneys and judges and family court is designed to protect children they do a remarkably lousy job uh, abysmal they get an f most of the time maybe a d uh sometimes some attorneys and some judges move past a d minus and might get a d or it, at best a c I almost said C minus, more like a D plus. Uh, if you expect child protective services, if you expect school personnel, uh, or even even uh, professionals like me to do more to protect your children than you can, uh, I'm sorry, but you're just going to be gravely disappointed. And I, I mentioned this in the previous video. The problem, one of the biggest problems that I have with high conflict types, especially those who have a personality disorder, borderline, narcissism, antisocial, uh, is that they do not make any distinction. This part of their mental illness. Make no mistake, personality disorders are a mental illness. Part of their mental illness is they have no distinction between children and adults. And one of the reasons I believe that is true is that I believe that they're emotional and mental and brain development has been arrested probably because they had trauma and the part of the brain that basically is in the driver's seat doesn't make any distinction between child or adult they just lump them all in together i've seen high conflict types label kids as young as five or six years old as master manipulators uh, i've seen them put the kids in danger bring home uh really, really bad adults. Uh, they crave, you know, they, again, think of an adult child who's craving validation and meets someone at a bar that's smiling at them. And they just bring them home without using any judgment skills because they just lack them. And I've 
seeing too many situations where the, maybe the person they brought home ends up doing horrible things to the kids. It just, it's just, it's, it's really unfortunate. It's not always the case. Um, that's, that's not, that's not even the majority of the cases, cases, but that is definitely kind of a worst case scenario. And I've seen it more times than I, than I would have liked to, uh, unfortunately. And the thing is you cannot depend or count on the court or the system to protect your kids better than you can. And I know that a lot of caretaking parents or low conflict parents may watch this and they just think, well, what can I do? Because I think that they end up feeling powerless. Okay. If we go back to my little graphic, because they generally live at trauma and anxiety. This says managing anxiety. I know it's blocked. Uh, maybe I can move my, maybe not. Uh, but this is managing anxiety. Okay. Having trauma. Uh, and they generally feel powerless because that is the nature of trauma, right? Is trauma is feeling small, feeling powerless, having a lack of control or the, the lack of sense of control. Okay. Part of my work has to do with empowering those parents to take steps and actionable items, things that they can actually do to empower themselves and protect their children. Okay. Uh, don't count on the court to do it. They will fail you most of the time. Uh, like I said, high conflict types are actually really good at, at manipulating attorneys and judges. Um, I, I, I speak very poorly of these guys, very, very poorly. Uh, attorneys and judges don't know the difference between... Uh... <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit uh, vulgar. Attorneys and judges don't know the difference between a narcissist and their, and their own butthole. Um, and, and sometimes attorneys and judges are in that club. They're in the, they're in the narcissistic club and uh they don't they don't know heads or tails of 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 a high conflict type versus not uh most of the time if there's uh i believe there are good attorneys out there and there are good judges out there but it's a roll of the dice man especially with your judge uh your judge uh is is in the club okay uh here's the thing about judges and, and commissioners there are attorneys who have graduated to the next level uh, they're not unbiased. They're part of the club, uh, the, the club that you're not in, <laughs> neither am I, <laughs> um, and they're biased. Uh, they may be uh, in bed, maybe even literally, with, with certain attorneys. And uh, with judges, there are, there's no oversight. Your commissioner, your judge, there's almost no oversight. There's no checks and balances. There's nobody hovering over them to making sure that they're doing their job correctly or well or accurately or making good decisions. They can do whatever they feel like. And so you don't want to just, it's, it's really a roll of the dice sometimes and you just leaving it to chance of how that turns out. So make sure that you check out my course on five rules for high conflict co-parenting or I mean high conflict uh, divorce and custody. These rules are specifically designed, these five rules, and there's kind of six, so there's six-ish, six-ish rules um, that are designed to help you accurately portray the situation in court to have it go in favor of what is good for the children, okay? And so the link is in the description below. I am also available for hire on a limited basis. You can check out my website also in the description below. And... Uh, you must, if you are a caretaking parent and you have a lot of uh, concerns about your high conflict ex, you must learn how to empower yourself. You must learn what action and steps that you can actually take to um, uh, help the kids, protect the kids, if, if that is what's needed in the situation. And even though it's counterintuitive and even though there's a ton of shame and even though there's a lot of trauma tied to it, you must engage in self-care, good self-care. You must learn to manage your own trauma and manage your own anxiety because that will empower you to make better decisions for your kids. Okay, thanks for watching. I got to go to work, man. I got a, I got a, a kiddo that I'm seeing tonight. And so make sure you subscribe. And uh, I'm sure I'll do several, several videos that kind of feature this infographic that deal with all the dynamics and how making a shift in one area will alter the whole equation. So thanks again.